Okay, um, started in 2003. Uh, I was studying at the university and uh, I found this thing called parkour on the internet. Like so many other people found it on the internet. Started involving it in my own practice. Like I, I did martial arts and I also, yeah, um, started doing something called tricking and la la la, you know? Um, and I thought it would be nice to see if I can get all the people in Denmark together. So I made the first gathering. People came and it was uh, very fun to see that there were a few, like we were 20 people or something. And then it just grew from there and it's, parkour became more important than the other things along the way. And uh, it just involved to be teaching workshops, uh, performances sometimes, but mainly teaching was, was a strong tool in physical education for, for us. Street Movement is a company and we focus on teaching, doing workshops, doing education for teachers and whoever who wants to be an instructor. We're doing the ADAPT certification, a delivery center in Denmark. We do architecture and design. We have uh, a third guy in the company. We have Mikkel. Uh, that's the third guy. We're Martin and me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> double Mikkel. Uh, double Mikkel. Two Mikkels and one Martin. And uh, Mikkel, he's an uh, he's, uh, architect by education. So he's um, very good at the, um, uh, and he's also a practitioner. So he knows our language, the practitioner's language, and he knows the architect's language. So he can like communicate when we're talking with the, the government or institutions who want to build parks and so on. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, designing and uh, architecture for, for, not for parkour specific, but for movement. Like what it means, it's very important for me. It's, uh it's a big part of my professional life and it's also, of course, a part of your personality. It becomes a part of your personality, I think, for everybody in some way. So it's something that you never quite let go. You get more relaxed about it, but you're still like turning your head if you see a rail. That's interesting because of texture, placement, whatever. Um, so it just becomes a big part of you and like the values like to always like starve your ego and try to feed your like real personality if you take away the ego and build up integrity so they can trust yourself. Uh, usually it's when the when the classes are done at Gallo, me and Martin trains, I keep on training. Or uh, when I'm home, uh, uh, I will train alone. Yeah, it does, it does. It's uh, in many ways, you know. For me it's mainly like a meditational thing, like when I'm here, I'm not thinking about other um, challenges that we have and when you stop thinking about a challenge sometimes it solves itself like if you're taking your mind off it come back to the challenge it's good so mainly that like it's a meditative thing but also like I said uh, earlier about the integrity you start to trust more in yourself when you finish the challenges that you put up for yourself and you know yourself like okay is this a real feeling or is this an excuse like you know yourself better. It's much harder to train alone. You have to be more dedicated, you have to have the self-discipline, you have to, because when you're alone you don't have to like, people can say, see, when you're together with people and you say, ah, I'm gonna do this uh, uh, cat balance all the way, and you, if I fall down and I stop, you say, oh, what, what are you doing? Uh, and if I'm alone, I can just jump down and stop. So you have to have more self-discipline and keep on doing the things you set your mind to. So. Um, so it, 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 there's a bigger demand of self-discipline when you train alone. But sometimes um, I actually forget that I'm training with somebody because I get really focused on one thing. If it's, if it's a new jump I have to break, it's like whoosh, the whole world is just that jump. Um, yeah, But mostly I like to train with, the, with, the, with other guys because uh, just to push yourself a bit. Um, especially Martin, he's very good at uh, stuff that I'm not so good at, so he will do it just like pfft, and he uh, expect, uh, expect that I would do it like like that and I can't, so I have to like fight a little bit and that's, I really like it. Yeah. Um, I think we'll be teaching at the school many years still, um, but we we'll probably also do more work. We have a, a business and uh, we do a lot of consultants work, so I think uh, we'll be 
starting to educate more and more people through the ADAPT system to become instructors. We'll be doing even more architect projects where we'll build stuff that can work for good for Bakur, that is strong buildings, that is also interesting to be at for other people. And um, yeah, our young crew, they, they like to perform, so we also want to support them so that they can come to uh, different places and have good experiences with this, travel and, and learn. For me, myself, uh, physically, I hope to be strong for many years still, but uh, I don't have like any like set goals. I just really enjoy uh, training and uh, I'm not in a hurry to, uh, to quit or anything. I think that uh, we have this possibility to, uh, to be able to, uh, to do uh, uh, physical movements uh, without having a big gym. Uh, without having special hours, you can train from that to that time, but you can just train whenever you want to. Uh, so I think it's a really nice way if we could promote this idea that we don't have to take the escalator, but you can take the stairs, and you don't have to walk the stairs, you can actually crawl the stairs. Uh, inspire people to think a little bit different about how they move and how they live. Uh, that said, I... I my, I don't have that big goal where what will parkour do to the world, but I think that um, our, our mission is to inspire so many people about creativity and movement and not sit still. <laughs>